This lesson is going to teach you how to calculate the empirical formula for a compound. Let's say that you are at a crime scene and you find a white powder and you need to know what it is. You could take that powder to a lab and you could have it analyzed and you may get some information back um, that broke the compound down into percentages like it's 30% carbon and 20% hydrogen and 50% oxygen. You can get some information back like that and you can use those percentages to find the ratio of atoms within that compound, the most simple formula. And that's what an empirical formula is. It is the most simple representation of a chemical formula. And what it tells us is, and this is a word that I really want you to think about, it tells us the ratio of elements in a compound. So the most simple formula. It's a formula where the subscripts cannot be reduced. Now, just to help you understand what an empirical formula is, I'm going to go ahead and compare an empirical formula to a molecular formula. Molecular formulas will be covered in the next lesson. But here you can see CH4 would be an empirical formula. That's because a subscript of 1 and 4 cannot be further reduced. That's, that's the smallest you can break those down, 1 carbon to 4 hydrogens. Now, some molecular formulas for that empirical formula would be these guys. If you multiplied each of these subscripts by a 2, you would have C2H8 because 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8. If you were to multiply each of these subscripts by a 3, you would have C3H12. If you were to multiply both subscripts by a 4, you would have C4H16. So this empirical formula represents all of these molecular formulas, and I've got some dots after it because there could be more just depending on the multiple. N2O, um, two nitrogens to one oxygen. That is the smallest ratio of nitrogen to oxygens that can be represented in that compound. But you can see if we multiply both of these by a 2, we now have N N4O2. If we multiply both of these by a 3, we have N6O3 and so on and so forth. And here is one more example of an empirical formula. 2 and a 5 cannot be further reduced. That is empirical. And then you can see the multiples are just where we multiply perhaps both by a 2 or perhaps both by a 3. Um, you could always reduce your molecular formula and it will give you the empirical formula. So today's lesson is going to focus right here on these empirical formulas. I'm going to teach you how to find the ratio of different atoms within the compound. Then the next lesson will focus on molecular formulas. I'll teach you how to find the multiple of the empirical formula. And then we'll have one more lesson where we actually put both of those concepts together into one problem. So this is a great overview. This is where you're going to want to pause and maybe take a few notes. Now, here's just a little more information on empirical formulas. And these are kind of your basic steps. And this is going to be something else you're going to want to have um, copies of. So basically, here's how we do it. This is not going to mean a lot to you until you've gone through the process, but you still want to have this down. If you are given percentages, I want you to always assume for this video that you have a 100 gram sample. That's pretty common in beginning chemistry. And because of that, you're literally just going to change that percent sign to grams. Because it's based on a 100 gram sample, you really don't have to do any work there. Just turn that percent sign into the unit gram. If they happen to give you grams right from the beginning, just go with it. Number two, for each element in the compound, you're going to convert grams to moles. We already know how to do this. This is where we divide by the molar mass from the periodic table. If you need a review on grams to mole, there is a tutorial on YouTube for that. Step three, you will divide each answer by the number of moles, by the smallest number of moles. So once you get all of your answers, you've changed from gram to mole, you're going to look at all of your answers. And you're going to ask yourself, which of those numbers is the smallest? And you're going to take that number and you are going to divide every answer by that number. 
that's going to be real easy once you actually see me do it. These become your new subscripts because the goal when you divide by the smallest is to get a small whole number. So for example, if your calculator gives you 1.99, you're going to round that to 2. If your calculator gives you 3.98, you're going to round that to 4. Now there is one exception, and I did make a note of that down here at the bottom. After you've divided by the smallest, if your answer happens to end with 0.5, like 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, any of those answers, you're going to have to multiply all of the answers by a 2 so that all of your subscripts are whole numbers. And again, that's going to be a lot easier to understand once you actually see me do it in the problem, but make sure you make a note of this. There are actually some other exceptions like this. Um, for example, if everything or anything would end in a 0.3, you would multiply all of your answers by a 3. Um, you're not going to have to do that. In this level chemistry, 0.5 will be the only exception that you will be held accountable for. And once you get your new subscripts, you're going to write the empirical formula. At the end of this lesson, once you've seen the problems, I'm actually going to break this down into even smaller bite-sized steps. And that would be maybe something you would put on a note card. It would kind of be like cliff notes for the lesson. So the easiest way to teach empirical formulas is just to jump in and do some problems. So that's where we're headed now. So you want to have your calculator handy and you want to have your periodic table handy as well so that you can look up any of the molar masses you might need. Luckily, we're using a lot of common things that we see all the time. So um, a lot of these you're just going to know. Number one says... An unknown substance is analyzed and found to be made of 57.14% carbon, 6.16% hydrogen, 9.52% nitrogen, and 27.18% oxygen. Calculate the empirical formula. So our first step is if they give you percentages, just assume you have a 100 gram sample and make those grams. So we're just going to assume all of these are grams. And the second step is convert grams to mole. Now, you're, you're going to see a lot of different ways to do this problem. I like this method that I use because everything is laid out step by step as we work across the paper from left to right. So we're going to start with 57.14 grams of carbon. And we're going to convert carbon from grams. So that's 12.01 grams of carbon per mole. Next, we have 6.16 grams of hydrogen. We're going to convert that to moles, and that's a mass of 1.01 .01 grams of hydrogen per mole. We have 9.52 grams of nitrogen. We're going to convert that to moles, 14.01 grams of nitrogen per mole. I'm going to scoop this up so you can see all of the work. You can see this takes up a good bit of paper. And then we have 27.18 grams of oxygen and we know that that is 16.0 grams of oxygen per mole. So again, I really like working across from left to right because I like seeing my work progress and do the same step each time. Just a reminder, I took those percentages. I just changed them to grams. I used the molar masses from the periodic table to get from grams to mole. So 57 divided by 12.01 is 4.76 moles of carbon. 6.16 divided by 1.01 .01 is 6.10 moles of hydrogen. 
9.52 grams of nitrogen divided by 14.01 is 0 0.680 moles of nitrogen and 27.18 grams of oxygen divided by 16.0 grams of oxygen is 1.70 moles of oxygen. Now, I want to stop right here and remind you, you have not done anything new yet, really. You just wrote down your percentages as grams and converted gram to mole. This is something that most chemistry students learn very early in the class. So gram to mole, not a problem. Now here's where the new step comes in and it's super easy. What I want you to do is peruse through all these answers and ask yourself which one of these numbers is the smallest. And as I look through them, this is my smallest number. And you are going to divide every single answer by that number. So you're going to divide by 0 0.680 right down the line. So put those in your calculator. Now your goal here when you divide by the smallest, what you're trying to do is to get a small whole number. So 4.76 divided by 0 0.680 is going to be about 7. 6.10 divided by 0 0.680 gives me 8.97, so that is really close to 9. 9.52, oh no, sorry, 6.680 divided by 0 0.680 is obviously going to be 1. And 1.70 divided by 0 0.680. Now this one's a little tricky. This is coming out to about 2.5. That is not close enough to three to round up. It is not close enough to two to round down. If you get a number in your calculator like 2.48, 2.49, you're going to have to call that 2.5. Now, this is the exception I mentioned earlier, so you're going to see it right off the bat. You can't have half of an atom. We can't have two and a half atoms of oxygen. So you ask yourself, what is the smallest number I could multiply that by to get a whole number? And the answer is two. So anytime you have just one, that's all it takes, of these answers ending in 0.5, you're going to have to multiply every single answer by two because you've got to keep the ratios correct. And if you multiply one thing by 0.2 or by, by two, you've got to multiply them all by two. So by two by 2. The only reason, again, we're multiplying by 2 is because we had this, this 0.5, and that's going to cause us to have to do that step. So 7 times 2 is 14. 9 times 2 is 18. 1 times 2 is 2. And 2.5 two and times 2 is 5. So what just happened here is because we multiplied all of these by a 2, these are the new subscripts in our formula. And this is going to make our empirical formula. So the empirical formula for this compound is C14H18N. 2, 5. And these numbers are those small whole numbers that we're trying to reach at the end. That's how you find an empirical formula. Now I'm going to verbally walk back through the steps with you again real quick. You can break these down so simply. As long as you remember four little steps, for the most part, it's very easy. So again, what we did was we wrote down our grams and we converted gram to mole. Not a problem there. 
Once we got these answers, we looked at all of them and said, which one of those is the smallest? It was 0 0.680. So we took that smallest number and we divided every single answer by that number, trying to get a small whole number. That's what we wanted. Our only problem was one of the answers came up as 2.5, which was not high enough to round up or low enough to round down. Because of that 0.5, I had to multiply every single answer by a 2 so that it stayed um, proportional. These are the subscripts that go with each element, and there's your empirical formula. This formula is empirical because you cannot break it down anymore. That's as much as you can reduce those subscripts. So let's do number two. It's going to be a lot faster and a lot easier because we've had some experience. So go ahead and copy this down. So you might want to pause for a second. Given a substance that is 40% carbon, 6.67% hydrogen, and 53.33% oxygen, calculate the empirical formula. You know, pretend you're like a crime scene investigator and you go and find a odd little powdery substance and you need to know what it is. You would take it to your lab. They would um, analyze it, and this is the information that they gave to you. So based on this, we can actually find that empirical formula. So... First thing we're going to do is assume that we have a 100 gram sample, which you can always do unless you're told differently. Um, so we're just going to change all these to grams and we're going to convert gram to mole. So line them up. So we have 40 grams of carbon, 6.67 grams of hydrogen, and 53.33 grams of oxygen. And we're going to convert grams to mole. So the mass of carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. The mass of hydrogen is 1.01 .01 grams per mole. And I bet all of you probably know these off the top of your head now, which is great. And the mass of oxygen is 16.0 grams per mole. So let's divide those out real quickly and see what we get. 40 divided by 12.01 is about 3.33. Six point six seven divided by um, 1.0 is about 6.60. And 53.33 divided by 16 is also 3.33 moles. And that just happens to be how that worked out. So we've done our first step, which was, I'm going to make a little note down here. We did our first step, which was converting gram to mole. That was step one. Now, the next step, we're going to look through all these answers and ask ourselves, what is the smallest number? And in this case, two things are the smallest number because they're the same. Um, the 3.33 is the smallest. So we are going to divide all of our answers by that 3.33. And we know those are both going to be 1s. And 6.60 divided by 3.33 is 2. Now what was great here is these are all whole numbers. Nothing ended in a 0.5, so I'm actually done. My subscripts are going to be C1, H2, O1. And that is my empirical formula. So this one seems to be a lot easier. C, H, 2, O. So what you can see is these are your new subscripts. 
So again, here are the steps. We went from gram to mole. Then we, we could say divided by the smallest. You can see how much easier this is getting now, right? And we could also add a note here. We divide by the smallest to try to get a whole number, which happened in this one. If it doesn't, if you get a 0.5, just multiply everything by a 2. And then we write the formula. Ms. Robs, call the office. Ms. Robs, call the office. Sorry please. about that. That's life in school. Um, we get the occasional announcements even when there are no students in the building. So welcome back to high school. So that's how we do it. All right, let's take a look at one more. And then I'm gonna give you one to try. All right, so take a second, jot that down, and then we will do it together. So number three says, an unknown substance is collected at a crime scene. It is taken to the lab to be analyzed and is found to be 62.1% carbon, 13.8% hydrogen, 24.1% nitrogen. What is the empirical formula? So let's think about our steps. We are going to convert percent to gram just literally by changing the sign because we're assuming we have a 100 gram sample. Then we're going to take each of those substances and convert gram to mole. We're going to look at our answers, choose the smallest. We're going to divide all of the answers by the smallest number. That gives us the new subscripts for our empirical formula. So we have got 62.1 grams of carbon and 13.8 grams of hydrogen and 24.1 grams of nitrogen. All substances that you are very familiar with, so you're probably not even going to have to look these masses up on the periodic table. So carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. Hydrogen is 1.01 .01 grams per mole. And nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole. So let's punch those in and see what we get. So 62.1 divided by 12.01 is 5.17 and 13.8 divided by 1.01 .01 is 13.66 and 24.1 divided by 14.01 .01 is 1.72 So what we have done here is converted gram to mole for each of our original percentages. Office here comes Mango, another one. Call the office. Officer Mango, call the office. Guys, we are just keeping it real today. Um, there'll probably be more of those. Okay, now look through your answers and ask yourself which one is the smallest. And that is going to be 1.72. So we're going to divide every answer by 1.72. So that's going to be a 1. 13.66 um, 
divided by 1.72 is 7.94, which is really close to 8. So we're going to round that up to an 8 because remember the goal here when we divide by the smallest is to get a whole number. And then 5.17 divided by 1.72 is 3 on the nose. So, good news is nothing ended in a 0.5, so we have our subscripts for the new empirical formula. So, it's going to be C3H8N. And remember, we do not write ones. So, we'll just put that right here. C3H8N. And you can see this is where your subscripts came from. All right, I have one more of these that I would like you to try. This is your turn to shine. So um, here are a couple notes for you before you get started. So I want you to remember this. You just go percent to gram, gram to mole, divide by the smallest, round to a whole number, Ask yourself, is there any reason I should multiply by a 2? That would be if you saw a 0.5 and write your formula. So now you can see that first list of instructions we had that had all the details. We needed those. But now you've done it a few times and you can really break it down into some smaller, more manageable, bite-sized pieces. Bite-sized chemistry. That's what we want. So go ahead and take a second to jot this one down and then we will do it together. Okay, so let's take a look at this, and I'm going to try to cram all this in at the bottom of this paper. I think I can do it. So we have an unknown substance that is 22.1% aluminum, 25.4% phosphorus, and 52.5% oxygen. So I'm going to write these down. I've got 22%. 0.1, remember we can assume grams, grams of aluminum. I have 25.4 grams of phosphorus. I hope everybody got this right. And I have 52.5 grams of oxygen. And my job is to convert right here from gram to mole. So the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams of aluminum per mole. Phosphorus is 30.97 grams of phosphorus per mole. And oxygen is 16.0 grams of oxygen per mole. So we're going to divide all of these out. 22.1 divided by 26.98. Um, I'm getting about 0.819. Sometimes when I have really tiny numbers on these empirical formula problems, I'll actually go three places out from the decimal because I feel like that makes it a lot easier for me to hone in on a whole number at the end. A lot of times it doesn't make a difference, but if you see me going three places out, you'll know why. So I'm going to record that as 0.819. Moles of aluminum, 25.4 divided by 30.97, I'm getting 0 0.820, almost just like the first answer. And 52.5 divided by 16, I'm getting 3.28. Now, I'm going to look at all my answers and ask myself which number is the smallest. Um, you know, really, either one of these would work. They're so close, but it's technically 0 0.819. So I'm going to divide everything by that. So 
So that equals 1, 1, and 3.28 divided by 0.819 is 4. Don't have to multiply anything by a 2 because they all came out to nice whole numbers. These are my new subscripts. So my answer is AL P O 4. And you know what, guys? That makes sense because isn't that the only way that aluminum and phosphate can be together? Um, if aluminum's a plus 3 and phosphate is a minus 3, that actually made sense. So hopefully some of you recognize that as you went through the problem. So again, empirical formulas are not difficult. We can now break it down into those super easy steps. Change your percent to gram if they give you a percent. If they give you grams, just run with it. Convert gram to mole. Divide by the smallest. I will tell you that is the step that is most frequently left out with my rookie chemistry students that are new because sometimes when you convert gram to mole, you actually get numbers that kind of look whole and kids will forget to divide by the smallest. So just don't forget that step. It's very important. When you divide by the smallest, the goal is to get a whole number. If you get anything in it in 0.5, multiply everything by a 2. Again, there are other exceptions beyond that. At this level, you're not going to have to know those. The next lesson is going to be the second part of this. That is the lesson on molecular formulas. So you definitely, hopefully, have looked at this one first. I'm glad we were keeping it real today. We had the, the leaf blower outside the window. We had the announcements coming across the intercom. You know, it is what it is. It's a pandemic, and we're doing what we got to do to get done. So um, I hope this was clear. My students, you can email me with any questions if, if there's anything that's not clear. You can always go back and look at it again. So let's move on next to molecular formulas.